Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll click the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sever, and today we're investigating a quick and easy procedure of distribution fitting in Python. We'll be using some Python packages to retrieve real-world stock price data, and then we'll use packages such as SciPy Stats, NumPy, and Pandas to construct simple and understandable distribution fitting procedures, for example, the kolmogorov smirnov test, to investigate whether the normal distribution and the Cauchy distribution, two extremely different functions that can be used to plot uh, distributions of, say, stock returns, fit real-world data. And we'll investigate how flexible and how um, intuitive this algorithm can be built. And we'll build it from scratch, first importing the packages we'll need. We'll need NumPy to work with arrays. We'll need Pandas to work with data frames. We'll need YFinance as a Yahoo Finance package to download real-world stock market data. We'll need SciPy stats to work with some statistical functions. And finally, we'll need matplotlib pyplot to actually plot the distribution function graphs. First of all, let's retrieve those packages and specify uh, what kind of stock over what kind of sample do we want to investigate. And let's keep it simple. Let's go for something like Tesla, and let's go for three years of uh, most recent data. For example, we can start in 2019, at October end 2019, for example. Mind that uh, this is the format that uh, Yahoo Finance recognizes. So it's year, a month, day. So four digit uh, year, two digit month, and then two digit day separated by dashes. And it should be a string, so you need to select it um, in inverted commas. And the end date, let's select 2022, October end as well, for three years worth of historical data. And then we can uh, have a Yahoo Finance download uh, function to specify the ticker, the start and the end. Then we can specify that we need just the closes for this particular um, query. And we can say that those are our prices. To make it simpler to work with later on, we can immediately convert it into a NumPy array so we don't have to worry about indexing. And if we want to uh, see how this query works and whether we do indeed retrieve prices this way, we can run the script now and we'll see an array of prices starting from around $21 per share three years ago and ending at $228 at the end of October 2022. So the script indeed works correctly and we can see some pretty high values around this time, which is indeed what happened to Tesla stock prices uh, at the very all time high. Using these uh, price uh, arrays, we can calculate our returns. And here, just to spice things up, I'll use log returns. We can use numpy log function and then uh, just calculate the logarithm of um, consecutive ratios of prices. So we go from the second day towards the end and then divide it to the price array from the start until the penultimate element, so to negative one, that allows us to calculate uh, log returns. And then we can sort them. So we can simply numpy sort our returns. And by default, it would be in ascending order from lowest to highest. And that's exactly what we need because then we can construct uh, our empirical distribution function uh, using just a numpy arrange uh, function. So we can construct our empirical distribution function called EDF and say it's equal to numpy arrange from one to the length of returns plus one. That would give us um, a series of integers from one until the a total number of observations inclusive, because this particular upper bound on arrange is non-inclusive, as you might know. And then we divide it by len returns to get um, an empirical distribution function value from zero to one. And then we can uh, simply see how it looks. So PLT plot, returns, and EDF. And uh, we'll be able to see the curve of the distribution of returns of Tesla 
over the last three years, we can see that this distribution curve starts at around minus uh, 23, 25% over here, and the highest return is slightly lower than 20% in a day. Again, you could have constructed that for simple returns again, but I'm just using log returns here to spice things up. To change that to simple returns, you'll just need to remove the log function here, and instead of taking the log, you'll just subtract one, and that would also work for this function. Um, again, we're just sticking with log returns here, just to, for the sake of something new. And now, after we have constructed the empirical distribution function, we need to compare it to the theoretical distribution function, such as the normal distribution or the Cauchy distribution. So let's start with the normal distribution function first, as it can be quite easily retrieved using a side by stats function. So here, we need our mean as NumPy average of returns. That would be the location parameter for the normal distribution function. And for the scale parameter or the standard deviation, just the volatility, we can use the NumPy STD standard deviation function based on returns. And now our normal cumulative distribution function can be retrieved just using the sci-fi stats norm CDF function, applying it to our returns. And then we input our location parameter, which is the mean, and our scale parameter, which is the standard deviation. And uh, now we can quite easily just plot those alongside each other. So PLT plot our returns and our empirical distribution function. Then we plot returns alongside our normal cumulative distribution function, the theoretical function. And then we apply the PLT show so that it doesn't interfere with the further plots that were made. And we can see how uh, well or how poorly the um, empirical function, here it's in blue, uh, corresponds to the theoretical function, uh, which is normal distribution in orange. We can see quite a lot of deviation uh, around the hump, and we can see that the tails of the empirical distribution function are quite a bit fatter than the tails of the normal distribution. And that's what you very often see in real-world stock markets. You can see a very uh, thin hump and uh, quite fat tails which is not adequately captured by the normal distribution, but to quantify this level of deviation and see whether it's statistically significant to understand how unreliable or how reliable uh, the normal distribution is for modeling this particular stock return movements, we can apply the kolmogorov smirnov test. And it's quite easy to do in Python because we can directly calculate the p-value for the test. Well, the probability that this uh, return uh, sample comes from a normal distribution, applying an exponent to the kolmogorov smirnov uh, test statistic. And that uh, starts with a negative sign. So the higher the statistic is, the lower the probability that the distribution does come indeed from this function. And first, we apply the len returns here because the higher uh, the sample size, the more certain we can be that a given level of deviation signals that the uh, return distribution is indeed different from the underlying function and it's not just some random disturbance. And then we uh, multiply it by the uh, squared maximum deviation, or it's alternatively called the supremum of our uh, empirical distribution function, which is the maximum of the absolute deviation of the empirical distribution function from the normal cumulative distribution function. And this supremum needs to be squared. This will return as the p-value, and we can now uh, check whether it um, fulfills the conventional significance thresholds. Because if the p-value for the kolmogorov smirnov test is less than 10%, less than 0.1, we can confirm that normal distribution does not fit the data. The deviation is too large, too substantial, to come from random chance alone, and it means that the normal distribution fails to capture the return generating process for this particular stock. And we can go as far as even uh, printing the p-value alongside it, so we can get a little bit more information in terms of how large this deviation is. So we can print p-value and then add a string of the rounded p-value to four uh, digits, let's say. And that allows us to retrieve the information of our test application, but if it's not less than 10%, if it's large enough, the p-value is large enough, which means that the deviations from normality can be assumed to be random, we can print that normal distribution fits the data. And then in terms of the p-value, we can just copy 
the script we've written on top. And that allows us to apply the Kolmogorov Smirnov test to our uh, normal distribution. We can run the script now, and we can see that normal distribution does not fit the data as the p-value is around 2%. So even if we have chosen a stricter um, confidence interval, if we were to look for 5%, this would still be uh, violated. The uh, deviation would be too large for us to assume normality. But let's check the um, adversary of the normal distribution in the realm of distribution function, which is the Cauchy distribution. It has very, very thick tails and very thin hump, and we'll be able to visualize it, see how it looks, and also check whether it fits the data well in terms of the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. So first of all, for the location and scale parameters, it's very common to use the median, so we can apply uh, the median uh, function or the quantile function as well, the median is just the 50, 50th percentile, so this would also work quite easily. And then, for the scale parameter, we need half of the interquartile range. So we can construct the scale parameter using half interquartile range, which means we subtract from the 75th quantile, and we subtract the 25th quantile, and divide by 2, giving us half of the interquartile range, which is... Uh, the scale parameter for the Cauchy distribution that you use when applying the method of moments. And now we can calculate the Cauchy cumulative distribution function mathematically using the closed form solution. Uh, you could use a package to retrieve it, but it's uh, easy enough and straightforward enough compared to something like the normal distribution where the formula is quite massive to just code it um, directly. So it's 1 over pi, which can be retrieved from the numpy package using numpy.py times the arctangent, and quite conveniently, we've got the arctangent function within the numpy package, so we can apply it to arrays, and we need to apply it to returns minus our, our location parameter, which is the median, divided by the scale parameter, so scaled returns go in the arctangent function, and then we add a half. This is the Cauchy cumulative distribution function that we can visualize um, using the same procedure we've got here, so we can copy that, and the only thing we need to change is that here we're referring to the Cauchy cumulative distribution function. Now we run the script and we see how the uh, fit is different. The Cauchy distribution fits the hump very well, but it predicts a lot fatter tails that we see in reality. So for the normal distribution, the most glaring um, deviation was at the hump, whereas for the Cauchy, the most substantial deviation is at the tails. And that's quite common when you model stock price data with either uh, normal or Cauchy distributions. That's a very common observation to have. And finally, we can uh, apply the kolmogorov smirnov test for the Cauchy distribution. So we can copy the lines of code from the top. And the only thing that we need to change are the references to the normal distribution, because now we are investigating the Cauchy distribution. And that's our script done. We can run it now and have got both um, of our um, test applications running. We can see that for Tesla, this good degree of fit at the uh, hump uh, makes the Kolmogorov smirnov test select this distribution as the better fit, as p-value is, um, well, 12%, which is higher than our cutoff threshold of 10%, meaning that for these purposes, we can use the Cauchy distribution for Tesla Again, but with a consideration that there is some notable discrepancy that even uh, can be noticed um, visually uh, at the tails. So Cauchy distribution can potentially overestimate the risks of investing in Tesla. However, it produces a better fit compared to the normal distribution judging by the p-values and the results of the Kolmogorov smirnov test. But the um, test is so flexible that we can change our sample periods or our stocks um, uh, at the blink of an eye. So for example, if we apply it to something like Walmart, we would see that uh, here the degrees of fit for both uh, distributions are quite a bit smaller and none of those two distributions fit the data, which motivates the use of quite flexible and uh, uh, general distribution families such as the Johnson SU distribution or the generalized error distribution that can fit a wide range of stocks or return generating processes for different assets to a better extent than those extreme solutions like the normal distribution of the Cauchy distribution. 
And obviously, what can also be um, prominent is that we use the, me the method of moments for estimation here, and uh, for uh, other multiparametric distributions especially, using the maximum likelihood method would be more appropriate. And this is something that uh, I would obviously be willing to show you in future tutorials from the Distribution Fitting in Python series. Stay tuned for more content. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos that you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.